Welcome to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out with Julie Caraccio. Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., Julie interviews experts on all areas of clutter, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Learn easy-to-implement tips on how to release clutter and get organized to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. An award-winning professional organizer and coach, Julie also shares suggestions to help you live clutter-free for a more joyful and fulfilling life. Do you let go of clutter, but then at no time it's back to the way it was? Do your books on releasing clutter and getting organized collect dust on a shelf? Do you know you need to dig deeper on releasing clutter but keep getting stuck? Our Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out Releasing and Affirming MP3s support you in all areas of your life, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Today's episode is an interview I did on a Hangouts on Air show, Thinking Out Loud. If you haven't checked out Hangouts on Google, I encourage you to do so. It's always fun having the tables turned, as well as interesting to see others take on clutter and what they want to know about. Enjoy! Hey everybody, welcome to this Friday edition of Thinking Out Loud. I don't know why I call it this Friday edition, because we do it all the time on Friday. It is the way to end your week. Mm-hmm. And with me today is my co-host, Katrina Van Cook. Hi, Katrina. Hey there, Arizona. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm pretty happy it's Friday. I'm going on vacation next week, so um, if I seem a little spacey, just realize that I'm already sort of on vacation in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> but Julie you- has so many good tips. I'm really like, she's going to be like autopilot on the show. Seriously, guys. She's got a lot of good stuff. Oh, yeah, it, it, and, and the topic. I mean, mm-hmm. how perfect is a topic? You know, we're, we're talking about decluttering our lives, and um, I, I like to think of decluttering, you know, you have to emotionally declutter, you have to, you know, physically declutter your life. You have to, um, just on every level, you have mm-hmm. to think about the clutter that you're allowing to enter your life and l- realize which ones, which things are best to let go. So, mm-hmm. Julie Caraccio, Caraccio, I may get that right. You are, it's good. It's all good. <laughs> um, you want to say a couple of words before we get going? No, I'm excited to be here. Thank you. I sometimes think out loud and get in trouble, so luckily I'll be able to think out loud today and hopefully not get in trouble. And <laughs> I'm passionate about helping people clear their clutter because I believe when we do that, we can share our gifts with the world, and that's the world I want to live in, and we're not there yet. Yes. I totally agree. Yeah, and, I, and I, I love how, for you, it's not necessarily just something that you do, it's something that you practice. It's not just your job, It's this is like a mantra for how you live. And so you know what it's like to do these kinds of things and find that more peaceful path for yourself. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got interested in it, because I'm really curious about that. I mean, obviously we all have tendencies, but there must have been something that drew you to this initially. Well, you know, that's interesting. I had been working, my background is in nonprofit. I was a grant writer and director of development, and I had the worst nonprofit job ever. And I thought, you know, I'm going to go start my business because it can't get any worse than it is now, right? <laughs> and so I thought, well, what could I do that I'm good at but that I would enjoy? And so I came up with organization. And so in 2009, I started healing through organization, and it has kind of morphed. I was very purposeful when I named my business that because I saw how organization could help heal people. Mm -hmm. For instance, I had a client who they never ate at the dinner table and she was a newlywed. So when we (laughs) did clear the clutter and did that, it helped her relationship. I saw mother-daughter relationships improve. And then in 2011, I started an internet show, Reawaken Your Brilliance. And it's very interesting. I was kind of setting the, the next stage because I'd have organizers on there and I thought, you know what, clutter has more of an impact. When we remove clutter, that's really, it's more about the clutter than the organizing. And, you know, people Mm -hmm. will talk a lot about physical clutter and mental clutter, but I have added, and I'm sure that I'm not saying I'm the only one, but I'm also very passionate about 
adding the emotional and spiritual clutter because of the journey I've been on because whatever is going on in the inside is reflected in your outside environment and I think too often we're unaware and we can't change what we don't acknowledge or understand or know and so that's what gets me jazzed to help people support people in doing that. Oh, that's awesome. And I love how your own inspiration kind of keeps you going because like you said, if the connection for you is also that healing part, it's really awesome to see those people transform before your eyes, like how their life changes when they can actually tune in and, and notice the changes that are going on in their environment because they are multi-layered. You know, it does have an impact on your mind, your body, and your spirit when you make those kinds of transitions. Absolutely. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, and I also wanted to, to poke around a little bit about the client part of things because obviously, you know, you, you have a podcast and you, you also do your show and you have a couple of these other things that you're doing, but how do people kind of connect with you initially? Is it just that you're sort of, you're putting out the message that you, you are, you help them declutter their lives, you talk, you focus on the healing part, like what do you think draws in people the most? I would say, well, I think it's a combination of things. You know, YouTube, the podcast, my website. I talk about decluttering your life. If you go at the top, it says declutter your life. And so it's very holistic. And ever mm -hmm. since I started my business, I've been that way. I would think that the common thread is that people are tired and unhappy. They know mm -hmm. clutter is preventing them from living the life that they'd like to and so they say something has to change and because I include everything, the inner and the outer, I think they see the connection. It doesn't matter what level but th when they hear that they're like, yeah, that makes sense. I don't know if I completely understand it but they understand that and know I need support in moving through this. Well, and I think for a lot of people that are in their business too, there's, you know, your home clutter and your life clutter but if you work in your home and your office is in your home, that's a whole other layer of clutter that may be happening. And I do, I mean, for me, we just moved into our house last year. I had to make sure, like, look, this time, my office is downstairs. I sleep upstairs. I don't want all of that stuff on the same level. Like, for me, that energy was kind of mushing together, and I couldn't really relax. So I could, I was just always aware of where I, if I was in the, on the office, it felt like work. And so I'm sure that happens for a lot of other folks, too. It's just knowing how to wisely use the space that you have and what do you want to actually use it for. Absolutely and something that I encourage people to do is to create a sacred space in their home. Mm -hmm. Maybe your home's big enough that you have a meditation room but maybe you only have a chair or a corner where you're able to do that but where you can meditate, breathe, relax, close your eyes, think about gratitude. I encourage people have that area in your home because if you have that you know, 80% of us are visual learners, so you have that visual cue, but then it makes it a lot harder to walk by that chair or that room and not do anything about it. I know, right? It's, I think that's one of the, the best parts that I have, have noticed about moving is that it really does create that space of sanctuary in my bedroom and other areas upstairs in the house so that it does feel very separate, and then I know that I can relax when I'm up there. And it is really nice also that my, house, my office is in the basement, so when it's really hot, I'm very cool. <laughs> it's very well, strategic. I'm jealous thing. of that. Yeah. I'm very jealous of that. Uh, I have the same thing going on because my office is downstairs also and upstairs. I, I tend to think of it more mental clutter, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Gary may be watching TV or, you know, whatever. Down here is kind of my meditation space and my office space. Yeah, it makes a big difference. And, you know, you're working with so many different kinds of clients, right, on a range of things. What would you say are some of the more common challenges or are there things that are just obvious and we don't know that everyone's struggling with it? We shouldn't feel bad about ourselves because everyone's struggling with it. Oh, you know what? I think we most are. Now, physical clutter, I don't have a lot of. Mm -hmm. That's not to say I don't, but because... I'm so aware of that and when I especially do an on-site job that just reminds me I don't want to get more physical clutter but spiritual clutter is where I will be working on until I fall over and die because it's just <laughs> I always want to be the best woman I can be but that's you know where my biggest challenges are mm -hmm. I would say um, for physical clutter a lot of times there are some questions that you can ask yourself do you love it Mm -hmm. I mean, truly, truly love it. Do you use it? Do you need it? Could someone else get better use out of it? You know, probably all three of us and any women listening have bought a $100 <laughs> blouse or jeans and never wore it. 
Well, someone who just got out of a, a, an abusive relationship or is trying to get back in the workforce, that is going to mean they're going to get better use out of it than it hanging in your closet collecting dust. So that's mm -hmm. another way to motivate people to release. Is it who you are or who you want to be? Does it oh. allow you to be in the present moment? Mm -hmm. Is there an online source for it? How much is it costing you? You think of your home as real estate. Is it costing you to have it there? Or are you making money? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I want to share a statistic because I'm kind of nerdy. The average home, and again, you know, there are different statistics out there, but the average ha home ha in America has over $7,000 of credit card debt while, or I'm sorry, over $10,000 in credit card debt while carrying or having about $7,000 of stuff in the home that's not being used. There's wow. a debt almost eliminated. I, I, I know that we're one of the few countries that actually have, if not the only country, who actually has, you know, people buy all this stuff and then they rent a storage building to store all the <laughs> stuff that they bought. I know. We, we spend, here, I just did a statistic on this yesterday, America, $22 billion in the storage industry. And we went out, my uncle and his partner in town visiting, and we went out to dinner and our waitress was from Vietnam and we ended up having this interesting conversation with her and she said, oh my parents are now in the Netherlands and she said, what are we doing in this country? We work all the time mm -hmm. to buy stuff that we don't need to go to Black Friday to beat someone up to bring <laughs> something home we're gonna put and stuff in our closet. And I thought, you know what? She summed it up pretty nicely. Right. <laughs> right. Really. Well, and and, the, and shopping wisely. It's like use that same mentality when you're going shopping. Will I use this? Do I love this? Like those same questions are extremely relevant when you're actually purchasing something too, not just getting rid of it. Well, another thing that's helped me when I'm at, because I mean, you know, women buy outfits all the time, just like you mentioned. But if I buy an outfit in the store, I think, what outfit am I going to get rid of in my closet? Mm-hmm. Or what shirt am I going to get rid of? Because if I bring a shirt home, something's got to go. Yeah, I like that idea. And plus, like, you, it helps you sort of manage the clutter as you go. Absolutely. If you bring something in, get something out. And, you know, the other thing, you touch on a great point. I like to talk about your clutter kryptonite. And so you know how <laughs> Superman, blah, kryptonite, and I fall over. Yeah. Learn what your clutter kryptonite is. I'm just talking for physical clutter for the moment. Now, mm -hmm. for me, it's beauty samples. Uh, I can lose 10 pounds, give me a sample, get rid of the wrinkles. Mm -hmm. But if I'm not aware and paying attention, I have a drawer full of beauty products that are probably going to go bad. So I know, okay, that's my kryptonite. And I have a plan. I'm going to not go by the beauty counter. I'm going to bring my husband with me. All these different things I can do. And it's the same with leopard print. I love leopard print. <laughs> you know, I could probably own 5 million things in leopard print, but I'm like, okay, no. You have a mm -hmm. pair of shoes. You don't need another pair of leopard print shoes. But because I'm aware of it, then mm -hmm. I have a plan in place, and it makes it easier to not have the stuff come in. Yes. Well, and I actually have a very interesting question for you. It just popped into my head. Men and women versus each other in clutter. How do you how do you think that usually plays out? That's a very interesting question because ninety five percent of my clients are women. Mm -hmm. um, you know, women are mainly majority are running the home, taking care of the home. Not everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that women tend to to get more physical clutter. I would mm -hmm. say than men. That's just my. But you know. And I would also say there's certain areas. Like my husband is one of these guys that can do everything. He knows how to lay tile. He knows how to paint. He knows how to redo floors. It's nuts. So he has a lot of tools. Right. But he uses them mm -hmm. and takes care of them. And so they aren't clutter. But there are areas that men would tend to be more challenged in and get more clutter. Is That's how I'd say it. It's t if that's were to give a general statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. You know, my... Um my partner Chuck is a he's a software engineer, but he's also always messing around with computer hardware stuff. So whenever there's an older computer that he's not using, he doesn't throw it away. He's like, I might need parts for that. Right. But yeah, how he chooses to store it <laughs> wouldn't really be my choice. But it's in his office, so it's he has the space, he can do with it what he wants with it. It's just not how I would have my space. But you have to respect your partner's wishes to have their office or their space however they have it. You have, you know, it's a balance. When I work with yeah. couples or families, and the thing I say is, I don't consider myself a minimalist. Like, we have a cat, 
So we have Joey's stuff probably in every room. And a minimalist or someone who is like Martha Stewart, they might see that as clutter and trash. We don't. He's a part of our family. But mm -hmm. you have to, if nagging, if it becomes about nagging and being stressed all the time about clutter, then you've gone a little too far. And so if it's mm -hmm. in you know, your partner's area, again, like I would always check in every six months, a year. We do an annual purge. I've done an annual purge before I was ever an organizer, and I'm a firm believer in that. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have to have some leeway because you're going to create emotional clutter if you're always fighting. Yeah, I know. That's why we are like, okay, that's your office. You can put whatever you want in it. And I can't say anything about it because it's not my office. Right, right. <laughs> well, I wanted to, to interrupt. And uh, Katrina had asked a wonderful question to the Thinkables, our audience, um, about what the biggest challenge is with clutter and how does it make you feel. And Ron Snayberger, I, I would put him up, but all of a sudden my lower third vanished, which means I can't display him. Uh, Ron Snayberger says clutter can make you feel anxious, raise your blood pressure, among other health problems. Mm -hmm. It can make you tired, and just getting rid of a little clutter each day can make you feel better. And Joyce also uh, went along with that and says uh, clutter is literally debilitating, which I also found. A physical and mental clutter, I think, is some of what we all deal with and we must need to work on downsizing it. I agree with that. They have done studies that clutter has been implica excuse me, implicated in depression, mm -hmm. uh, a general dampening of brain function, a um, for increase in anxiety and non-compliance in meds. If you're mm -hmm. trying to eat healthier and you have a cluttered kitchen, that's your problem. Oh, I'm too tired to cook. There's too much clutter. I'm going to have a frozen meal or get takeout. If you yeah. have piles on your bed, how are you going to get eight hours of good sleep? They're mm -hmm. absolutely right. Yes. Well, <laughs> it's funny. Um, this Earlier this year, I got one of those like, little settees, those little benches that you put at the end of your bed, and that's where all my clothes go. So I'm like, well, I only wore this for two hours. I'm just going to put this here. And then by <laughs> day four or five... <laughs> it's growing. But that's like my one thing I know I do. And it's funny because, I mean, from what, in talking with Julie, she's like, look, it's not about not doing e anything and, and managing your, micromanaging your clutter. It's about saying, hey, this is my deal. I know I do this. And that's why I loved how you told the story about the beauty products. Because <laughs> that's what I do with my clothes. It's like by three or four or day five, it's like the clothing pile just gets bigger. <laughs> well, what I would say to you, I do the exact same thing because I hate doing laundry. So if I've worn it for two hours, it's going on the bench. But by day five or six or the end of the week at the latest, everything's hung back up. Yep. So if you don't do it every day, that's okay. But commit to once a week. Yes, I definitely do that. And I was kind of bummed because I had to run somewhere this morning. And I was like, hey, I'm going to put this dress on. I'm like, and it's wrinkled because I didn't put it away. <laughs> I didn't hang it up. That's my own fault. <laughs> now, Jeremy Murphy in the audience has an interesting comment that I had never thought of. He said, multitasking creates uh, slash contributes to more physical clutter. And that's not even getting into the mental clutter. Now, I totally agree that multitasking causes mental clutter, mm -hmm. and you can't you know, be very mindful, but I never thought about it causing physical clutter. Dude, I love that hashtag, multitasking madness. Yes. <laughs> That's an interesting perspective. To be honest, I've never thought about that. And I would love for him to clarify a little bit because I'm thinking, well, first of all, you know, they've done studies. We don't multitask well. But I'm looking around. I'm sitting here in my office. And um, I don't know if I'd agree with that. I, how I operate is I have a notebook with a big list. I have pens and pencils and a, a, a drawer. I don't know. So much stuff is done with computer. I don't know. I would, would love to hear him explain how and what he's seen or what has happened to him, how it's become physical clutter. All right, Jeremy, you got a shout out. <laughs> it's time to put it in the time to put it in the stream. <laughs> but you know what? I think that is I what I love about that is that's an awareness for him. If that's how mm -hmm. it's affecting him physically, he is aware of it. So then the next step can happen that you can clear it. Well, and that's one of the things that I really loved when we discussed the show last week was that you you allow other people to define clutter. You're not mm -hmm. defining it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because I, you know, y'all are fine with having your clothes laying around. Personally, that would drive me absolutely <laughs> bonkers because I'm OCD, according to my kids. So, 
But it's it's individualized, and you know that's yeah. a mistake people read. They'll read a magazine or read a book and say, "This is how I have to do it." Mm -hmm. No, you don't. It, you have to fit your personality, your lifestyle. You know, like I talked about Joey having stuff in every room. Well, that fits us in our lifestyle. That someone else, like you, might be like, "Oh my God, cat toys everywhere! I couldn't handle it." <laughs> it's really it's up to the person. It really is. Well, and I think that people also read that material and then they start judging themselves and they feel bad about where they're at and they can't really understand or figure out how to take that next step towards, okay, well, I know I'm not happy with what I'm doing, but I don't know how to change it and I kind of feel bad about that. I, I can imagine that happens quite a bit. Oh, I agree with you. And I just was talking with someone about asking for support mm -hmm. because I think we are raised to believe we can do everything on our own. It's... Uh, we're the rugged individual and it's it's bad to ask for support and I completely disagree with that you mm -hmm. know we were laughing I was having computer issues I'm <laughs> I'm not a computer person that doesn't make me stupid but I asked for support so if that's not your area of strength it's not a weakness to say hey you know what I need some support mm -hmm. and not to judge yourself that like you said when you're reading in this book if I'm gonna be clean and not have clutter, then it has to look like this because yeah, that puts a lot of extra pressure. You no, know, I, I see, and she's probably gonna come after me someday, but I use Martha Stewart as an example. You know, that is mm -hmm. I but I see a lot of people who strive to be like that and it's not realistic. You don't know that she maybe sleep I think I read somewhere she sleeps four hours a night. You know, but she has a staff. That is her life. Most of yeah. us have families, have jobs, we're running businesses, I'm mm -hmm. trying to cook healthier, that takes time, so it's not realistic. It's, it's kind of like reality TV. It's mm -hmm. just, it's not how the real world works. Right. Well, I mean, and do you think a lot of people sort of have, do you like talk with people about a clutter-free plan? Because I think, like you said, every room is different. Like for me, yeah, I walk into the kitchen and it's super cluttery and I'm just like, ah, oh, this is too, I want to just go eat out because I don't want to be in here right now. So I totally, when you said that, I could totally relate with that. But, you know, maybe for a different room in the house, I have a completely different level of okay with the clutter. Uh, yeah, when I, um... I had put together my course and that's one of the things I do and one of your exercises is to go room by room and evaluate it because you're going to have a different level for everything most definitely yeah this is deep stuff people see it's right in front of you and you don't really realize how much it's affecting you I mean seriously it well, does. Well, I mean, I want everyone to just, if they are able to, not if you're driving, close your eyes for a moment and think about being in a room whether it's in your home in your office or a colleague, think books like piled high, papers everywhere. You can feel that. And then mm -hmm. think about being in a room where there's no clutter. I'm not saying there's nothing, but everything's stacked neatly. It's in its home. It's in its place. You can literally feel the difference in the energy of, of rooms. And I'm betting you're going to want to be in the clutter-free room, especially if you're being creative or working or doing something. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. Well, and even with pets, I think pets are a good example of that, too. I mean, they can add clutter to your house, and that's okay, too. For us, the house we moved into, the bathrooms are a little smaller. And I was like, okay, first things first, we moved into this house. The first thing we did was put a cat door into the garage. So the litter boxes were outside in the garage, and it was life-changing. Like, we just couldn't do that on the other house because we were renting, even though we wanted to. And it's just been so nice because it's just clutter that's out of the way. Yeah, you got to go remember, scoop the box, but still, it's just, it's, it's a different place and it feels so much better. <laughs> it does. I mean, it, that's one little change that you made and see how it mm -hmm. had a huge impact. Yes. And, yeah. I don't need my cat, my kitties to be in there hanging out with me while I'm using the bathroom. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Jeremy Murphy got back on the multitasking. He says, multitasking is a strength and a weakness. If you're a highly productive as a writer, reader, you're dealing with lots of paper, blog posts, book manuscripts, notes, and how do you mm -hmm. organize all this? Use Evernote for writing to keep the paper volume down a bit. When clutter becomes a form of self-expression, we know we've gone too far. Oh, he's, wow, very great. What A tip that I give to a lot of creative people is... Do you know how if you're in an office you have one of those mailboxes that has slots for everyone? Mm -hmm. What I like about those is, so if you're a writer and you're working like, I, I get that, I have three different projects right now, but I'm able to put everything related to the project via slot. 
So it's organized and clutter-free, but all of the projects together, so I don't mm -hmm. lose anything, and it's labeled, so I know, okay, this is what this is. So that's just one thing that I found a lot of creative people really enjoy, and it works well for them. Yeah, yeah that, that is a great idea. Yeah, and I, and I get that, and I've worked, and you know, it's interesting with people who are creative, sometimes they have a fear they're going to lose their creativity if they release the clutter, if they get it organized, because uh -huh. it, and I get that, you know, they're like, oh my god, if I organize this, or, yeah, you know, all my ideas are going to go out, I promise that's not the case, but that's truly been a big fear of people. Huh, that's really interesting. Well, there's a, there's a, I have a friend that's very cluttered like that, and he's super creative, but yeah, I don't know if that's just because he's you know, that's his way, but at the same time, I don't know if he ever thinks like, hey, I think I'd rather create something than get rid of my clutter. <laughs> well, you know, someone asked me an interesting question the other day. They said, well, what about Einstein? Do you think, you know, and I said, so I thought a moment, I said, well, great question, because he was, if people didn't know, was extremely cluttered and very scatterbrained. And, and part of me said, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And then my other part went out and said, you know what, how much more could he have accomplished mm -hmm. had he had less clutter? I mean, we talk about the, the general da uh, dampening of the brain function, which has been proven. You know, I'm not pulling this out of thin air. And with a brilliant mind like that, how much more could you have done? And I will always argue that it's better. I once worked at my last job at a colleague who, crazy, I don't know how she worked in her office, and she said to me, but I know where everything is. And I said, okay, mm -hmm. well, in 20 minutes, when you get me the paper, I'll be in my office waiting for it. So I had to wait 20. It, do you know what I mean? But that was her routine. Right. She knew where it was, but it took her 20 minutes to find everything. So I would argue if you can get away with that, I think that's probably a move in the right direction. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have to factor in that finding time. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Well, I, and I think that's why I, I, you know, I did the whole thing around how clutter is expensive. I mean, it's expensive to your health. Mm -hmm. That's, that's first. It's, it's expensive to your peace and your joy. Um, but, it, you know, it's expensive in time. And the time that you waste trying to find things or trying to deal with the mental clutter. Mm -hmm. Oh, my what? gosh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it, isn't it a large part of just shifting your perception of what value is coming from that whole entire collection of things that you own? That's really the best way that I can put it. I mean, from I don't really watch the hoarder show, and I know that's not what this show is about, but those people are very emotionally attached for whatever reason to that stuff. So I think a lot of what people are dealing with when they're looking at clutter is the what is the emotional cost if I do let it go? Like, is am I going to lose a part of myself? Like, what is there? It's just weird how that emotional investment get, gets caught up in stuff. It's a fear. Now, yeah. first of all, I want to say about hoarding, there is a psychological trauma that has happened. You know, I'll give you an mm -hmm. example. This is, woman wasn't a hoarder, but when she was a child, uh, the parents came in and gave all her stuff away, and, and including stuffed animals. So she was in her 40s and had a bunch of stuffed animals because of that trauma that happened as a child. And again, not hoarding, but mm -hmm. um, you could see how an experience like that in childhood could shape her in adulthood. Um, the other thing is, if everything has value, then nothing does. And I really right. want to emphasize that. If everything has value, then nothing does. Because I think a mistake people can make is... Every th they do that. Well, it's valuable. I can't let it go. Mm -hmm. Well, then you can't let anything go if everything is worthy. And so if you're really clear on what your priorities are, then it's going to be easier for you to release clutter. Mm -hmm. is that, I'm assuming that's one of the first things that you work on with people when you start working with them and giving it them is. some tips. Yeah. Absolutely, and I have to. And you know, I just did a class on downsizing yesterday, and I talked about that. If you, prior to touching one darn thing you own, if you mentally prepare and know that when you're going through all that stuff and have to, you know, cut out a third or two thirds or half of what you own, it's going to go a lot more quickly if you're very clear on what's important to you. Yeah. Well, when I went through, and people think I'm nuts because I, I literally sold a four bedroom home, uh, sold everything in it. And packed up a station wagon and went off on my merry little way with whatever I could fit in my 2001 station wagon. Um, it was Saturn, so it was a smaller station wagon at that. Yeah. Um, but I was very clear when I started going through things that if I hadn't touched it in six months or a year, it was gone. 
you know, obviously it wasn't valuable enough to me, but that didn't mean it didn't have value to somebody else. Exactly. Right. And the other thing that I like to say to people is trust that you'll get what you need when you need it and apply that to people as well. For instance, if you are holding on to things to give to a family or friend, you know, trust they'll get what they need. It's not your responsibility to do that for them. And I don't say that from an uncaring place, but I say that when it has become clutter in your life, it's time to let it go. And mm -hmm. they'll get taken care of and you'll be taken care of. I can't tell you the number of clients. Oh, how long have you had that? Ten years. Have you ever used it? No. <laughs> well, would you consider letting it go? Well, I might need it someday. Mm -hmm. So if you have that faith and that trust, that makes it easier to release things. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because I, even when I go shopping for clothes, I'm very, very clear when I'm shopping what I'm looking for because of the what you just explained, but also because I'm really lazy and I don't want to go back to the store. Like if I, To me, it's like I've done this. I've crossed it off my list. I don't want to have to go back and exchange something that I don't like. So I'm just very mindful when I buy things that I, am I going to use this for a long time? Like my bike that I have, it's a Trek, it's a mountain bike. I've had that bike for 20 years. I bought that bike before I moved out here. I still ride that bike. Like I just, I'm that kind of weird person that... No, that's in stuff. amazing. Yeah. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. And you know what, a tip that I think is really helpful, I don't like clothes shopping. Um, and what I did is I went and saw a stylist who showed me what colors look good on me, what styles, and so, because going into a store was really overwhelming for me. Mm -hmm. But I know, okay, this is what looks good, this is what I can buy, and it's made the process a lot easier. Oh, nice. Yeah, I definitely like shopping. Yeah. I just know that I'm very mindful of, will I wear this? Because, again, you're just dragging it around or moving it somewhere, having to store it somewhere, and it just becomes extra clutter and something else I have to worry about. So I, I have had a couple, <laughs> a couple of clients with homes, literally, I'm not literally homes full of clothes, meaning taking Please. every room up, taking a basement, yeah, and many with the tag still on. That's crazy. That is totally crazy. Um, now, what yeah. about, like, okay, so when I was raising kids, I had six kids, and <clears throat> while my son always got new clothes, my girls didn't. It kind of depended mm -hmm. on where they fell, and I would, you know, carefully pack things up in the storm, in your opinion, would it have been better to insist storing them to, you know, just trust that it was going to come along? I say trust because storing items out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. If we don't see it and it's stored somewhere, I mean, look at Storage Wars. I don't know if people have seen that show, but these are people who have their storage containers are given up because they haven't been there or haven't paid. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really believe that. If it's out of sight, it's out of mind for most people. Now, something that you can do is take a box, put the items in it, date it, and check it in six months or a year. If you haven't used it, let it go. Mm -hmm. So you haven't gotten rid of it, but you're putting a timeline, saying, okay, this is, and then I'm going to honor that. I would think that it's really hard for people that have kids because they always, they like to hold on to those nostalgic things. They always wonder, like, well, am I going to have another baby, and then what if I give it away? then I won't have this and I'll have to buy it again. So I, I see that a lot with families. Yeah, and you know what? I completely, I can completely respect that. But is it stored? Is it clutter-free? If you have a whole room full of clothes, I'm going to argue that the kids don't need that many clothes. And then, <laughs> again, you know, I work with people where they are. But I'm going to say, you got, maybe got hand-me-downs from your sister. Trust me, you'll get the hand-me-downs again when you give them to someone else. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and then for for different rooms in the house, like do you kind of have the same philosophy of approaching every room the same? So once someone has their priorities set and once someone has an idea of what they're looking for, is it essentially the same sort of formula that you kind of teach them to use in every room, or is that still kind of change a little bit too? I would say there's a general way mm -hmm. that I do things and suggest people that do things how they would do it and go about it, but it's 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 going to be the same pattern, I guess, for lack of a better word, for each room. But again, it depends. What are your priorities? What are your lifestyle? You know, what's important to you? Because that all plays into it. Yes, that absolutely does. And the lifestyle piece, especially, because like you said, there may be something that maybe you did like to do, you ski two, 10 years ago or five years ago. If you're not skiing, yeah, that's just taking up some space. Right, let it go. And then you need to ask yourself, 
you know, I'm fine taking a half an hour. I had to clean a half an hour before my relatives came. Mm -hmm. I'm down with that. Someone else feel, might be like, you know what, I need to be ready for if anyone drops in company, I don't have to do a thing. Well, then there, you know, then we're going to have approach it differently and do things a little differently if that's the case. Oh, I see what you're saying in terms of the priority. I gotcha. Yeah. For clients. And that is a good point. I don't like surprise people in my home. <laughs> I like to know they're coming. It partly is because of the clutter, but just as an energetic, an energetically sensitive person, I don't like people just showing up at my house because um, I need to get grounded and, and sort of balance that a little bit. So I think I'm pretty sure everyone has their own priorities. I'm sure there's other people, other clients you work with that are similar to that too. Oh, absolutely. And I'm the same way. I'm very particular about who I have in my home. Mm -hmm. And that, yeah, so I, I completely understand that. But, you know, there's a way that you can work with that. And that's why I mentioned earlier, have a place of sanctuary for you. I think that, that is so important no matter what your beliefs is, mm -hmm. your religion, spiritual, whatever it is. I think that everyone benefits from that. Yeah. Well, I mean, in terms of just watching some of the clients go through transformation, like how have you seen them become more peaceful? Because that's really ultimately we're all trying to get to our own Part, our own definition of what peacefulness is, our own sense of, of mindfulness so that we can operate every day and feel relaxed in, in ourselves. And, you know, it's always interesting to hear some stories. So do you have any cool stories of, of transition for people? I'll try to think of some, I'm just something, I'm just going to say what pops in my head. So I once had a client that she had a stack of papers up to here. And I said, okay, what are these? Okay, those are articles and stuff I'm going to send to people. Okay, how long have you had it? two to three years okay so then we begin digging deeper and she said and she was able to articulate because here's what I believe everyone has the answers within them I see my job is to support you into bringing them out you have your own wisdom I'm just kinda there to, mm -hmm. to help light the way and she said so we continue to talk and she said she started to cry and she said I'm afraid that if I don't send them and keep in touch they won't love me anymore and as mm -hmm. soon as she said that she was able to really, you know, that's false. That's not true and let yeah. everything go. Oh. And I had a, you know, I mean, that's a big step. And then I had another client who had a, um, what's the word I want to use, a stressed relationship with her mother. And every time her mother would come into the house, she'd complain about what, how she couldn't keep house and everything was cluttered and mm -hmm. would nag, nag, nag. And when we got all the clutter and got it organized, their relationship improved and became a better relationship and became more peaceful. And it wasn't like this every time her mom was going to walk through the door. <laughs> right. Uh, I always love listening to those kinds of stories because it is really amazing when you can see people just make that connection for themselves. Because you're right, it's, it's really them shifting that perception so that they really kind of understand how they're viewing something and how then they can make that change. Then they can say, okay, I can let it go. I had a client that I got ended up getting into coaching, which you know wasn't the original plan and and what I really love and what happened with that. I was in a, a client's home. I went to see her, and she said, "Just talk to me." And I said, "Okay." So we started to talk. She brought up some some heavy duty stuff about a sexual assault, mm. and so for about three hours we talked, and I listened a lot. And then for the pat, then maybe the hour forty five minutes we worked on releasing clutter. And I get home, and in a couple of days she emailed me, and she's like, come back, but this was great. I want to talk. And then, I, because once I talked with you, I was able to go and let go of the clutter. Oh, that's that awesome. Was, you know, a different way of reaching the same end point, but that it, it worked for her. Yeah, and because you, sometimes you can, I mean, there's such an emotional component to it. You can't just dive in there and be like, strategy, strategy, let's... Let's get into action mode. You have to understand why this person is holding on to this stuff and really help them shift that for themselves because then you'll be there every year. Right. <laughs> Whatever I had to do it themselves. Well, one thing that I do when I finish working with someone is I have a clutter free living plan and I see where they get stuck easily and give mm -hmm. them instructions because I don't want to be there year by year. I want mm -hmm. you to build your muscles and go off and live your life and and not have me there. Yeah, that would be a lot of upkeep. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, are there some? That, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just also going to say that that demonstrates to me how allowing the emotional clutter to release allows you to declutter and you know, do the physical decluttering. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's all in alignment. It is. It is. Yeah. And that's because we can't separate our personal and professional lives, and we can't inter, uh, uh, separate the inner and the outer clutter. Right. 
Well, and like, I mean, you've been given awesome tips like the entire show, but are there some specific ones that you can suggest for people that are sort of on the end of like, I want more peace in my life, but I can't quite get there, or if you yes. know, just regular stumbling blocks for folks, because I know that you can provide some pretty helpful tips. Absolutely, for that. I did a little cheat sheet because I'm getting old. Uh, <laughs> okay, here's one that I love: live in the present moment. If you start to become aware you're going to see for most people that you're either in the past, oh I should have said that, I wish I would have done that, or you're in the future, oh my gosh am I going to have enough for retirement. Your uh -huh. point of power to change is living in the present moment. If you say when you're like oh I'm not going to have enough for retirement, that's not doing anything. Okay present moment, I am going to call right now my friend who's great with money, I'm going to ask her advice, I'm going to get a financial advisor, I'm going to stop Starbucks every day yeah. and put that money into retirement. When you take action, in the present moment you can take action. When you're in the past or the future you can't. You're stuck right. there. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and that creates, and I'm also a huge fan of meditation. Whether it's mowing the lawn, whether it's listening to classical music, now I'm a, or if you have to just close your eyes for 10 minutes a day. We, our minds get so cluttered. We are bombarded with information. We're always going 24-7. If we don't take that time to balance and recenter, that we get monkey mind. We go crazy. I know there have been times. I know when I started my own business, and, and you two probably understand this, yeah. you can do something on your business 24-7. There is oh, always yeah. something to be done. Always. But if you take that 10 minutes a day to recenter and calm that monkey mind down, what will happen over time when you do it regularly is you don't get thrown off as easily. Oh, client just yelled at me. Okay, <laughs> let's let's proceed. You know, you you are in your center. You don't get thrown off, and it relaxes you. You sleep better. I mean, that's if I were to say one thing, that's the biggest change that people can make. Oh. Absolutely. Well, yes. I found that by releasing the clutter, the physical, the emotional, the mental clutter, all, all that I was carrying around for years, I actually had better relations with my clients and better relationships all around. Mm -hmm. I have better relationships. Mm -hmm. yeah, Absolutely. Well, and I think for some people, they don't really ever look at their clutter unless they have to move. Like, that may be the impetus as to why. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe if I had stayed on the East Coast near my family and bought a house and then stayed out there for my whole life, I would have more clutter. I just had to move a lot. Even, you know, within just moving to Fort Collins 15 years ago, it's been about 15 years, I've had to live in several places because first I lived alone, then I lived with a boyfriend, and then I lived alone again. <laughs> and I was kind of, I've been moving a lot, around a lot, so I just, I had to learn to be like, all right, let's keep it lean and mean. I don't want to be dragging this crap everywhere. And plus it just right. doesn't do anything for me because then I have to help some, but someone's got to help me carry it, you know? Right. But that's true. That's true. And you know, sometimes it takes a crisis. Yeah. Okay, now I have the the bank wanting to repossess my house because I haven't paid the mortgage, but my finances are so cluttered. I don't pay my bills on time. Okay, wow, I need to completely reassess my financial life. Or mm -hmm. I've had a heart attack and I don't have good health and what's all the clutter in the kitchen and I can't eat healthy. You know, sometimes that's what it takes. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Well, Arizona, I don't know if there's any other comments. I, still, I think we had some really good ones in there, but I don't know if there's anything else that you wanted to, to add on the show today. I mean, Julie's always got power-packed information, so. But well, I, you can have me back again. I can talk for this uh, on this for hours. I'm happy to. That is so cool. <laughs> But, uh, I was I was thinking, you know, maybe we could have a show. You know, this one seemed to, to deal more in the physical clutter, and I would love, love, love to have a show that dealt with the emotional and the mental clutter that we all deal with on a daily basis. Yeah, well, yeah. why don't we talk about that the last few minutes at least? I know that Julie's definitely probably got some great tips for that because, when like, the finances. You don't think about that when someone goes through a health crisis and they have to reevaluate their financial situation. There's, that's a lot to, to do, especially when you're not feeling well. Right, absolutely. And and so, and there's so much going on there. And like that example, you're going to have the emotional and the mental clutter as well. Um, I can give a quick emotional and spiritual tip if you want to, to close it off. I would say for emotional clutter, this is funny because this is what I'd written and then we talked about it in the green room earlier. How do you treat yourself? Do you love yourself? Or are you kind to yourself? And there are many ways because that... If you aren't kind to yourself, that's going to create clutter on many levels. And I just wanted to point out some ways we are unkind. We overeat, we overspend, we drink, we fail to follow our heart or passion. 
And this is, um, or doing what others have told us what they want or think we should do. And I found out that's the number one regret of the dying. Mm. You know, how, how do you speak to yourself? Are you positive or are you harsh and negative? How, you know, what's your self-care? Are you doing healthy living? Do you reject yourself for who you are? You know, mm -hmm. do you have fun or do you take yourself too seriously? Who are you spending time with? Are you spending time mm -hmm. with people who love and support you? You know, those are just a couple ways that we don't show show love for and kindness to ourselves. Yeah, and especially on the emotional standpoint there too. Like we've always judged like I'm feeling like this and then you're judging yourself for feeling that way instead of actually just expressing it and finding a healthy way to express that for yourself. And um, yeah, and here's a quick tip. If you can observe because observing is awareness. If you can mm -hmm. observe oh, you know what, I'm feeling really jealous of Katrina right now. She just published her book. Well, why am I jealous of Katrina? Ah, because you know what, I want to write a book, and I wanted to write a book my entire life. That's what it's really about. It's not Katrina's success. I want mm -hmm. success for her. That's what it's really about. So you didn't judge it, but you became, you observed it and became aware. Yeah, be your own mirror. That's a great example. Yes, I love that. Yeah. And, um, I also think for um, from the ener for the energetically sensitive people, like for me, I do have to clear my energy field. Like that clutter sticks with me if I don't. Mm -hmm. So I'm very mindful of making sure that that's a part of my routine every day. If I'm going out in public, either before or after when I come back, it's just it's really important for me to do that piece. Yeah, that's excellent that you do that. That's huge. Yeah, I notice I don't feel very well when I don't. So after after a couple hours, my body's like, hey, I think you may have forgotten something if I... <laughs> right, but see, you're aware of that, and so yeah. you do that as a regular practice, and you don't your aura doesn't become cluttered. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. I had to learn that the hard way, but I'm really glad that I do, and that I'm aware enough that I can tell in the moment, like, yeah, I need to do something different. I need to, do, I need to make a little shift here and kind of go do my chakra balance. There you go. Excellent. No, I, I believe in it. You know, you're speaking my language. I absolutely think that's important as well. Yeah. I don't know, Julie. You're always so fun to talk to. This show flew by because you, are, like I said, had always really, really good insight to all these different situations. And it sounds like you're really enjoying helping people in this way. I mean, it's a very meaningful work for both ends of the equation. So It really great. is. It really is. I feel blessed to do it. And, you know, when you're living your passion, mm -hmm. well, Feed off of that, and that allows them, maybe if they're hesitant or don't know, no, I can do this too. Yes, no, I love that. I love that. I love that. Well, I um, didn't know if um if Julie had anything else coming up that she wanted to sort of promote, or if something in that vein was happening. Yeah, just really quickly, you can find out more about me at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. I do a podcast called Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. iTunes, Stitcher. It's Tuesdays at 1 p.m. and it's also on video at 9.30 a.m., and I just uh, published my first course slash book called How to Declutter Your Life, and we look at physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, and you can either get that or get the mini courses of each area, and it's really about um, taking it step by step and foundationally building that strong footing so that you can continue to clear clutter, and I'm that's my biggest thing that I'm excited about, and thank you for having me on the show. I love this and love you all or thinking out loud, and you know, putting different perspectives out there for everyone to hopefully at least mull stuff over. Yes, thank you. And it was, it was great having you today. Okay, go out, clear some clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Do you let go of clutter, but then at no time it's back to the way it was? Do your books on releasing clutter and getting organized collect dust on a shelf? Do you know you need to dig deeper on releasing clutter but keep getting stuck? Our Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out Releasing and Affirming MP3s support you in all areas of your life, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Thanks for tuning in to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. Sign up for our newsletter and receive a free copy of 10 Clutter-Free Living Tips. Ready to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire? Learn about Julie's coaching, ebooks, online monthly decluttering classes, how to organize your life, office hours, 
and her unique clutter-free living mastermind at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. You can also watch all episodes on YouTube or download on iTunes and more. Join us next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step.